Uh, God bless all of you today. I'm so happy to be a part of uh, your part of this weekly time we have together. We thank you so much for taking the time to share with us today. We certainly pray that all is well with each of you. To all of our regular House of God members that share with us on a weekly basis, so thankful for you and to all of our friends that, that drop in on us and share as well. We appreciate you very much for taking the time to, to share with us during this very special time we have each week, this presentation. Pray that all is well with you and your families. We thank God today. Just thank Him for the opportunity that we have to be able to share like this on a weekly basis. I don't think sometimes we understand how blessed we are uh, with technology and the things that God has provided for us to be able to communicate as we do today. So we don't take that for granted. Thank you so very much. I want to continue our discussion. We've had an ongoing discussion over a series of weeks now, even longer, uh, concerning the working of the Holy Ghost. After the ascent of Jesus Christ is returned back to heaven and after sending the Holy Ghost back uh, for his disciples and for all of us uh, that uh, are part of the body of Christ. What a time that was and we've had a lot of time to spend talking about it. I think the, the working of the Holy Ghost sometimes is something that we don't quite have a real handle on because we've seen so much and we've seen so many uh, different approaches to dealing with the Holy, Holy Ghost and what it's supposed to do. So I, I'm taking a, uh, some additional time with this. I hope that you're not bored with it and it means something to you as well. We spent a good deal of time dealing with the Acts of the Apostles and, and how uh, the church was developed and how it was energized and empowered to deal with all of the many conflicts and challenges that, that the disciples had. And I think that was an interesting time. But specifically dealing with the Holy Ghost uh, is what we're attempting to do now. So uh, remember, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, Jesus declared that uh, his disciples would be witnesses of him uh, throughout the region throughout the region as the world was known then, and projected on into uh, where we are today. And one of the things that he said to them that would be the, the engine that powered all of this, he said that they would receive power after that the Holy Ghost had come upon them. And that empowerment by the Holy Ghost is what we're looking at now uh, in our series. How does that work? What's the nature of the Holy Ghost? What is it designed to do? Uh, there's so many times you see uh, operations of, of, of what people call the Holy Ghost, and sometimes it, it, it really isn't as much uh, in line with what Jesus Christ intended it to be. Uh, we associate it, of course, with having a good church service and a good preaching and music and dancing and all those things that give us joy, and we come away being inspired by all of that, and that is good. I'm not taking anything away from that. That's good. But what Christ really had in mind uh, with the Holy Ghost goes far beyond uh, a, a good church service. So we've been talking about that. And I, I made uh, some notes here, of, I think five things that we want to remember in dealing with the Holy Ghost. And you, you can make notes of these if you will. Uh, last week we looked at Romans uh, chapter 8, very, very familiar chapter, uh, Paul's uh, teaching on uh, the Holy Ghost and what it was designed to do. These five things I think are important for us to take a look at. What does the Holy Ghost do? What, what, what's the nature of the Holy Ghost? What's it designed to do? What did God have in mind uh, when, when he uh, sent the Holy Ghost? One, the Holy Ghost empowers us. The Holy Ghost empowers us. Just keep that in mind. The Holy Ghost is designed to empower us. Empower us for what? To be witnesses, uh, to declare the word of God, to witness to the power and authority of Jesus Christ, 
It empowers us to deal with real life situations. It empowers us. That's why Jesus said to his disciples, they were going to encounter a lot of things. But one of the things that they that that the Holy Ghost was designed to do was empower them to be witnesses of Jesus Christ, to be witnesses of the the, the power of God, to be, be witnesses of Christ and his his saving, redeeming power, power of redemption through Jesus Christ. Witnesses. It was that element that would empower them. To empower them. He says that in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And what when you look at that, it, it, being an effective witness, when people are not necessarily receptive to what you say, or being an empowered witness to, to opposite in, in times of opposition, you had to be empowered, power to do that. You don't have the power to do that on your own. There must be that divine supernatural power that comes from the indwelling of the Holy Ghost in order to empower you. Uh, you may want to be a preacher. You're going to have a tough time uh, being a preacher without the empowerment that comes from the Holy Ghost. You may say, I'm going out to witness. I'm going to tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ saves. Well, you may run into some very difficult times doing that. The Holy Ghost is designed to empower you. Don't forget that. Number one, it's it, it designed to empower you. I think the next thing about the Holy Ghost that Jesus talked about himself, John chapter 14, the Holy Ghost is designed to comfort you, give you comfort, give you peace, give you comfort under difficult circumstances. So it, it is designed to comfort you. Jesus talked about it in John chapter 14, verse 16. He talked about the comforter, the comforter that he would send, that the Father would send in his name. Holy Ghost is designed to give you comfort in times of opposition, in times of distress, in times of challenging, in un, 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 uh, times where your peace is disturbed. So he talks about that. It's designed to be a comforter. Keep that in mind. That's number two. One, to empower you. Two, to comfort you. Number three, it's designed to indwell you, to be with you. Not only to be with you, but to be with you or to be in you. So Jesus talks about that. Uh, in John 14, verse 17, that the Holy Ghost is designed to dwell in you. So there's the indwelling part of the Holy Ghost that makes it so unique. There's nothing else like it. And, and, and remember what it is. It's the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God that empowers you, that comforts you, that indwells you. And when I opened, I was talking about some of the applications that people make of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes we use it in a way, or we, we, we promote it in a way, that's not consistent with, with the original design that Christ had for it. So when we go back and look at what he had in mind, uh, in, in, in giving the Holy Ghost. And John 14 is an excellent place to start with that. I'm going to look here just for a second. It, it's an excellent place to, to start because these are the words of Jesus Christ himself. I know what your favorite preacher says or your, your favorite minister says, but what did Jesus say? He's my favorite minister. So what did, what did he say when, when he started looking at this? Listen to this. Uh, Verse 16 of John chapter 14. He says, I will pray the Father. He's going to pray the Father. Keep that in mind. He's going to pray the Father, and, and he will give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. That's why he's my favorite preacher. He's my favorite prophet. 
He's our favorite minister. These are his words. We define the Holy Ghost sometimes in ways that Jesus Christ did not. So we need to go back to the original intent that he had for it so that we understand, and not only that, we can have it with the full understanding of what Jesus Christ meant. So what is it going to be? It's going to be the comforter that will abide with you forever. We have these uh, church meetings sometimes, you know, and then I've been in church all my life, for the most part, or at least been around church. So we have these services that are power charged. And, and I'm not saying anything bad about that. I'm a part of those, okay? But the Holy Ghost is meant to be more than that. It is meant to be more than that. It, it is meant to empower you, empower you, give you power, supernatural power. When the music is gone, when the church service is over, when everybody's gone home and you're on a lonely road going back to your house, uh, wherever you are, the Holy Ghost is still with you to empower you. Keep that in mind. To give you comfort. To give you comfort. That's number two. To give you comfort. And Jesus says, listen, this comfort will abide with you forever. Not going away. It doesn't, doesn't end when the music ends. It doesn't end when the dancing ends. It doesn't end when the singing is done. It doesn't end with all of those charismatic things that happen in church. It doesn't end there. It's designed, as Jesus said, to abide with you forever. And he says this, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. Now listen to how he says it in the rest of verse 17. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That's a part of what Christ designed and sent the Holy Ghost for. To empower you and to give you comfort. That's critically important. These are the characteristics. He moves on, and I'm moving on here, uh, following him pretty closely. He says something about the Holy Ghost that sometimes we miss. He says, even the spirit of truth. Truth. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. That will, that will be with you. you. Want to know what truth is? The Holy Ghost is truth. So what do we got? Number one, it empowers comforts, and it dwells in you. It lives in you. Think about that. The Apostle Paul uh, in 1 Corinthians talks about your bodies being the temple. Get this. The temple of the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? The place where the Holy Ghost dwells. And he says, know ye not that, that, that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Oh, you thought it was only a church. No. It goes where you go. It sees what you see. Not only that, it sees beyond what you see. It's the power of God that indwells you. So we've got three things here. We've got the, the empowerment, we have the comfort, and we have the indwelling, indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Listen to this part. This is another description. These are Jesus' description. And, and interesting, nowhere does he mention church here. He's talking about for life, in real life situations. He says something else about the Holy Ghost in, in verse uh, 26. Verse 26 of John 14. He says this. But the Comforter, remember that, the Comforter, and he declares what it is, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, listen to this. He shall teach you all things. 
Well, let me stop right there because this is number four on my list. The Holy Ghost is designed to teach and remind. Let me say it again. The Holy Ghost is designed to teach and remind you. You say, are you making that up, Brother Clark? No, I'm not. That's what the verse says. Let's, let's, let's check it out. In verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, that's what we're talking about, whom the Father will send in my name. Now listen to the next part of the verse. He shall teach you all things. Let's, let's, let's add the rest of the verse. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So not only does it teach you, but it's designed to remind you whatsoever he has said. Let me bring it to where you are in the 21st century. Whatsoever you've read about him, whatsoever things that he has revealed to you in Scripture, I'm not talking about somebody saying something as a revelation, but whatsoever he has said, he will remind you of those things. The Holy Ghost will remind you of the things that the Bible has shared with you by way of Jesus Christ or the Word of God. So that's one of the things that it's designed to do. It's designed to teach you, and it's designed to remind you. How many times have you remembered something in Scripture that Jesus Christ said, or the Word of God said? The Holy Ghost is designed to do that. So what is it? Number four? It's designed to teach and remind you. When your fears come upon you to the point that you say, oh, I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to withstand this. I don't know how I'm going through this. Oh, you know, my husband's sick in the hospital. My children are, somebody's sick. Somebody had an accident. Somebody's going through. Well, the Holy Ghost is designed to teach and remind. Think of some of the things that you've learned in your life that maybe you've forgotten through time, through busyness, through other things you're involved with, you'd forgotten it. It was there. It's still there. But you don't have the perfect recall to remember it. Been there? Sure you have. So the Holy Ghost is designed to teach and remind. How do I know that? Let me go back again and read that verse. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. All right? Now let's pick up the rest of it. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. It is a reminder. That's number four. Number five. We talked about this last week. I'm going to flip there real quick. We talked about this last week because this is, this is the nature of what the Holy Ghost is. It's what Jesus Christ had in mind. When he sent the Holy Ghost, let me give you this one. The Holy Ghost intercedes for us. The Holy Ghost intercedes for us. We're looking at the nature of the Holy Ghost and what Christ had in mind for the Holy Ghost to be. I don't know whether you see it this way, but the Bible gives us very strong support and very strong descriptions of what God had in mind through Christ in sending the Holy Ghost. Listen to Romans 8 in support 
of number five that I mentioned here, the Holy Ghost intercedes for us. Listen to this. Paul talks about it. I want to rehearse it with you today. He says in verses 26 and 27 of Romans 8, it's very descriptive of the work of the Holy Ghost. Listen to what he says. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. The Spirit. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. There's only one Spirit. So the Bible uses, uses these, the, the expression here. Sometimes it will say Holy Spirit. Sometimes Holy Ghost. But there's only one Spirit of God. So it has to be talking about the same thing. Some people ask, is there a difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit? No. It's not. So Paul's talking about the Holy Ghost. So what does he say? Verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Those things that we're weak in. Those things that we don't understand. Those things that exceed our ability to understand. Paul says that the Holy Ghost helps our infirmities. <coughs> Excuse me. And he goes on to explain the context for this it says it so wonderfully here in that 26th verse. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. I referenced it last week. I want to put more leaves on the trees this week and paint a little color so you see it a little bit vividly. He says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Brothers and sisters. Have you ever been there in your life? I have. And probably you too. But listen to what he says in the verse. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be other. Oh my goodness. Have you ever been there? When you don't know what to say, you don't even know what to think because of things that have come upon you. Paul uses very detailed language here. I want to go back and, and amplify it. He says, but the Spirit itself, when you can't do it, you don't know what to say. The Holy Ghost makes intercession with for you. So it intercedes on your behalf in times when life is very difficult. Let me continue. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I'm almost dancing here uh, today uh, as I think about that. Because that's what the Holy Ghost is designed to do. So let me go through these again. One, the Holy Ghost is designed to empower us. Two, the Holy Ghost is designed to comfort us. Three, the Holy Ghost is designed to indwell in us. Four, the Holy Ghost is designed to teach and remind us. And five, the Holy Ghost is designed to make intercession for us. Now that's God's plan. And it has no limits in terms of where it operates. It operates at church. It operates at home. It operates at work. It operates in your car. It operates on vacation. It operates when you're flying on an airplane 30,000 feet in the air. It operates when you go on a cruise. It operates when you're on vacation. It operates at the family reunion. It operates everywhere in all five of these capacities. That's good news. Because that gives you the confidence to know that wherever you are, whatever condition you're facing, whatever circumstances that, that, that has befallen you in this life, whatever enemy arises against you, whatever disease that invades your body, whatever happens in your life, 
The Holy Ghost is designed to be with you. I take comfort in that. You should as well. It gives me a boldness, if you will, to face life's conditions because I have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, the intelligence, power of God that dwells in me and you. So Paul makes some very confident assertions here. And I hope that you'll see these now, maybe in a little different light than you have in the past. With all of the support that we've just read, with all of the, 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 the confidence that we've gained from knowing that I have the power inside of me with the Holy Ghost, I have the peace of mind and comfort that it gives me. I have the indwelling of the Spirit of God in me. I have the power of God that teaches and reminds me. I have the intercessor inside of me. Now I am equipped for life's journey. Amen. Glory to God. I hope you're excited about this. Paul makes this assertion. And he makes the assertion that I'm going to read, and you already know it when I started reading it, but I wanted to build the foundation for this. Through looking at, the, through the lens that really helps us understand the working of the Holy Ghost. I hope that we will understand that it's, it, it's not just church. You know, sometimes we call the evangelist in, we call the healer in, we call the prophet in, we call the motivational person in, we call those people in, and they get us all charged up in service, and we leave. What a time we have. Oh, he preached today. How many times have you heard that? Oh, I'm telling you, he told us such good things. If that's all there is to it, then that's not very much. There's more. Because when you leave the church service, you move, you leave the exit of the church, you move into the world as it is. And it can be a treacherous, destructive place. And you need something that will be with you when you've turned that ignition or push that button to start your automobile and you leave the parking lot, the church service is over. The choir's gone home. The musicians no longer are playing. And you left all of your friends and saints at the church. They've gone their separate way. What do you have to go with you? You have the Holy Ghost. And Paul says, with that, in verse 35 of Romans, <coughs> excuse me, in verse 35 of Romans 8, laid on the foundation that we've just described, Paul says this. You can separate us from the love of Christ. With all of that power, and all of that confidence, all of that indwelling, all of that knowledge you can separate us from that. He goes with us everywhere, everywhere we go. So he says, and he goes through tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or the sword. There's nothing that can take this away. I'm equipped for life's journey. With the power of the Holy Ghost, it dwells with me. It dwells in me. And he says, as it is written, verse 36, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. And we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. You know, I, I, I looked at that verse and it, and it just kind of jumped off the page. Because some of your enemies, when they see you, they don't see the power. They don't see the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. They don't see those things. They don't see the comfort. They don't see all of that's dwelling in you. They see you as a sheep prepared for the slaughter. 
enemy sees that. But what the enemy doesn't know, and when I say what the enemy doesn't know, whatever that enemy is, doesn't realize that, that what dwells in you will cause you, as Paul says in verse 37, he says this, Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're more than a conqueror when you have the comfort of the Holy Ghost indwelling in you, when you have the, 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 the teaching that comes from the Holy Ghost to remind you that, lo, I am with you always, even till the end of the world. So you have all of that in you. And, and when the enemy sees you, he sees you as vulnerable. He sees you as weak. He sees you as one that he can take advantage of. He sees you as one that he can harm. He sees you as one that's defenseless. Little does he know in dwelling of the Holy Ghost is with you. Little does he know that you've been empowered by the Holy Ghost. You can do all things through Christ. Threaten, strengthens you. You've got the Holy Ghost. And what's so interesting about this, not only does it apply in our mortal bodies, it also applies if this earthly tabernacle, this body be destroyed, the Holy Ghost has still got me. God has still got me. So whatever happens, he's equipped me. Jesus said that he will dwell with you forever. It's not going to leave. So when Paul looks at this, he says, I'm convinced, I'm convinced, I'm convinced. I'm absolutely convinced. I'm persuaded. The word that he uses is persuaded. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present. And he goes to the blank check and says, nor things to come. I don't know what's coming. But I know one thing. God has provided a way for me. So he concludes, he says, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I don't know how you see the Holy Ghost, but that's how I see it. And I think that's what Jesus meant when he said to those early witnesses that were his agents to go out and to establish the teaching and preaching of Jesus Christ. Yes, they're going to talk about you. Yes, you may be put in jail. Yes, they may kill you. Whatever the case is. But he makes the declaration that when the Holy Ghost has come, you're going to have the power to deal with it. Brothers and sisters, in closing today, if you don't have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost as designed in the scriptures, you're living beneath the privilege that God has provided for you for the troubled, difficult times in your life. He's got you covered. The Holy Ghost is designed to do that. So in closing, let me reiterate these five characteristics and descriptions of what the Holy Ghost is designed to do. One, it's designed to empower. Two, it's designed to comfort. Three, it's designed to indwell uh, you. Four, it's designed to teach and remind. And five, it's designed to intercede. I don't know about you. There are times when I need intercession. There are some things that that the human knowledge cannot do. I need the design, the divine intercession of the Holy Ghost to petition for my future in light of what I'm facing. So thank you so much today for this time we've had together. I hope it's been meaningful. Go back and read the scriptures yourself. I encourage people to do that. 
uh, so you become convinced of what the Word says. I thank you so much for this time. Thank you for sharing with us today. Let us pray. Father and eternal God, I thank you so much for your blessings and your mercy and your kindness. I thank you for all of your goodness. And I thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Pray, God, that our words have been encouraging to someone that's searching for real answers in terms of the operation of the Holy Ghost. These prayers I pray in Jesus' name. Now the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. Give thee peace. God bless all of you.